Ladies and gentlemen, this is a specially scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board of Awesome. We have one agenda item tonight, and that is a second interview. And our second interview is with uh, Mr. Jeff Cabots. Cravats. I knew I'd drop an R in there. <laughs> and we have, I did. So we have a handful of questions that are follow-up questions. We have three candidates. We're having second interviews with Jeff. Uh, there'll be time throughout this freewheeling discussion, as has been demonstrated for the last 20 minutes. Um, Very freewheeling, but that's the best kind. Sometimes. And that will be for some give and take. Thanks for making it out on a Friday night. I really do appreciate it. Okay, so uh, that said, any comments to start from the board? All set, Mr. Chair. Nope. If not, We're pick a right. question and fire away. We're not going to do rapid fire like we did last time. We're going to do slow fire this time. Jeff, in what type of work environment do you thrive? That's a good question. Um, <clears throat> I think the it's a combination of a lot of different things. Um, one in which there's the, the flexibility to try something um, that may not have been tried before. Um, I think a, a work environment in which there's, it's a, called a, a trust but verify. Um, you know, I'm certainly comfortable taking a certain amount of a risk I, with the understanding that um, I would need to know what type, what level of risk you all would be comfortable with me taking. Um, I, I think that I'm not uh, afraid to fail, although I always try not to fail. Um, but a, you know, an environment in which, in which <coughs> there's an opportunity to, to try something new um, and hopefully wind up with a better solution. I think one of the things that I um, really appreciate and have come to learn about myself is having uh, someone or some group of, of people to, to bounce ideas off of. I'm sort of an iterative thinker and so um, realizing that the first idea either that I come up with or somebody else comes up with isn't necessarily the best but it, it, it's a starting point and working on it until there, there's a, a workable or an agreeable um, solution that, that is not just one person having sat down and map out the whole decision-making process. Um, so I think that, you know, certainly comfortable in an independent environment, but would prefer having uh, at least a, a other people around to, to talk ideas through with and, and ask opinions, especially um, you know as a newer employee, if there are people who have been around for a while, you know, getting getting the feel for would this type of idea fly, and, and I guess just having other folks to to bounce ideas off of. Um, is that the type of Question: The type of answer you were looking for. I'm assuming you're not talking about physical environment or any of that. But well, yeah, six, 68 degrees with uh, <laughs> relative humidity of uh, 62 percent. 62 percent. Yeah, that would have been fine. Just trying up for the banana plant. The ocean sounds in the background. <laughs> exactly right. The sounds of gulls. <laughs> but that answer will do. Thank you. <laughs> That's funny. Um, describe your management style. Uh, so I think similar to the work environment, it, it's a trust but verify. It, um, you know, I think that either uh, the people who who have been hired or, or in those positions were hired for a reason, or the people that I hire, is, I, I trust that they're, I'm hiring them because they're going to make the right uh, decisions. Um, certainly, supporting them with my time and resources when that's necessary and, and helpful to them. Um, but again, giving, you know, if it's a, a particular department head, you're the department head, you're the expert in that realm. Um, I'm going to defer to you. you. You know what you're talking about, but 
if you make a decision and it doesn't work out, then you need to own up to that and that's your responsibility. And so holding people accountable, um, but also giving them the, the freedom to, to make decisions um, as they see fit. Uh, I guess there's always the exception to the rule, which is um, as the manager, you have a broader view um, or a more expansive view than necessarily a, a single department head or, or one of your employees might have. And so there are going to be circumstances when they might have the right idea for them or what their what their viewpoint is, but it might conflict with something else going on over there that might have to take priority. And so being able to manage that and explain to the employees why a certain decision is um, sort of being taken out of their hands so that it's not a, a personal conflict and they under hopefully I do a good enough job explaining why that has to happen and why I feel it's necessary so that it, it doesn't become a personnel issue. It's This is a decision and here's why. And um, so I think that both of those things. Okay. All right. Thanks. D Dave, if I could. Mm. Jeff, what's the difference between a manager and a supervisor? Mm. So I, I, I would say that it, Excuse me. A supervisor is more about overseeing the work product, and a manager is more about overseeing the employee and the work product. I would say it's it's more about personal relationships, and um, I guess in my mind, a supervisor wouldn't necessarily be as invested in the employee and I think a, a manager wants to see their employees succeed um, and grow either within the organization or professionally and if that there aren't opportunities within the organization I, I feel like a good manager would um, mm -hmm. understand that and say you're great and we're glad that we had you for the time we did and uh, now spread your wings somewhere else whereas I think a, a supervisor um, in my mind, I picture sort of a, you know, a plant supervisor in a manufacturing and, you know, got to make sure that that piece or on the assembly line you're doing your job right and if you're not, you got to figure it out, um, but not really investing in the employee. So that, that's how I would differentiate the two. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. So if I could, Jeff, looking back, <coughs> You've been, at, you've been in the workplace a, a fair amount of time. Looking back, what could you have done to make a bad workplace relationship better? And has that relationship changed your previous strategies? Mm -hmm. um, I think one of, one of the keys is, is to try to put yourself in, in the other person's shoes and look at it not necessarily from your perspective. Um, you know, I, I always try to look at things objectively and that doesn't always work. Sometimes you have to be subjective from the other person's point of view um, when, when there are challenges. So I, I think that um, th that a key uh, aspect for me would be understanding where they're coming from and, and also understanding that sometimes it's uh, we all have lives beyond our work lives and, and sometimes it might not have anything to do with what's going on in at work um, and this is not really work related but it, it translated to work which is uh, you know I used to get really frustrated in the car and I won't say road rage where I would get out of the car but you know, somebody would, and I go, I have no idea why this person's in a rush. Maybe they're trying to get to the hospital because their kid just broke their leg. You know, and sort of having some compassion and saying, what's, what's the big deal if they cut me off? You know, it, it's not affecting, I, I guess, understanding whether or not it's affecting the work that, that we have to do together. And if it is, trying to be understanding and, and if there's something that I can do. And then also understanding that sometimes there are things that, 
I, can, I will not be able to control and it's, a, it's something that they have to work on and be as understanding as I can without um, allowing it to affect sort of the, the working relationship. And there was a second part to that question. Was that? Yeah, uh, and it, in, in that, if the scenario occurred, right, the relationship was better and had that relationship changed your previous strategies? Yeah. I think you laid out in your answer. The first part was part of the strategy. It was the comprehend, understand, right? Right, right. And I and I think that you know, without any specific examples, yeah. that that's sort of what I was able to do is yeah. is put myself in their shoes. And if I could understand, great. And then also recognizing <laughs> that it, it could just be you know, and hearing later on, actually in that particular case, that yes, they were going through some health, some pretty significant health issues, and and it was just affecting their sleep, which was affecting their attitude sure. and, and, you know, understanding that they need to solve that and, and it would reflect, be reflected at work. Thank you. Jeff, how do you evaluate personnel for promotion and could you give an example? Um, so I, I, have not had to evaluate uh, an employee for, for promotion. Um, so I can't give an example, but I could certainly talk about how I would. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that one of the things, and um, if this is sort of a free ranging discussion, yeah, then maybe right. it, I have a, a related question, which was sort of about, um, you know the the role for for supervision and human resources and are there standard practices like annual evaluations and goal setting and uh, expectation setting that are in place um, you know I think from my perspective and this goes back to one of the questions and answers from last time you know it, it's understanding expectations and what the resources are and I think that if if I and an employee were to, to set certain expectations and they went well above and beyond and you know there was an opportunity for them to be promoted or to be recognized in some way um, you know whether that is a, a raise a salary increase a you know an extra day off whatever whatever could be done to say I value the fact that you went above and beyond uh, what, what the expectation was and you really put the effort in. Um, I think it's important to recognize those employees uh, that, that are doing going the extra mile. Um, but I think that it comes back to setting the expectations originally and then seeing how they perform up to or beyond those expectations. Thank you, Jeff. Sort of as a tag along to that, like how do you how would you mentor employees and just like give us like an example of that? Sure. <clears throat> so, you know, one of one of the things that uh, I I had in the governor's office is we had an internship program and we had interns come from. Uh, the Harvard Kennedy School of Government and from Northeastern and interestingly the, the Northeastern students actually <laughs> I, I felt like were, were um, better interns and we had both good and, and, and not good interns I'll say but the, the ones that showed interest and, and worked hard um, were always asking for more work and so I, I felt like as uh, a mentor or a boss part of it was to understand what their interests were and and help find them the work that would both that they would find interesting and that they would be able to add to their resume that would help them build their career so understanding where they felt that they needed to work on things or places where I could identify um, you know you you want to this is a potential career path for you. You, you know, eventually you want to be um, a town administrator. You need to have experience, you know, managing people. Here's maybe a small budget that you can work on. Um, 
be get involved with here here are the aspects that that are important in this position um, you know maybe you don't know anything about the Department of Public Works spend a day over there see what they do talk to talk to the department head um, you know a any of those things to help ed un so I guess first understanding their career goals um, understanding how to help them get there and then uh, providing those opportunities I would say are three things that um, I would try and do as a mentor okay. thank you let me pivot that because sure. you were talking uh, <clears throat> an example discussed people who are entering the workforce take the perspective of someone who's been in the workforce for 25 years now you're coming in as a manager how about that level of mentoring I think it's also understanding what, where they, you know, and, and this is something that I've uh, run into from a different angle, which is um, people who have been around for 25 years and you try and change what their job is or how they do their job and they say well I've done this for you're the new guy <laughs> I've done this forever uh, this is the way we've always done it why is it getting changed um, and, and so I guess I would take the same approach if the you know 25 year veteran um, wanted to do something else or wanted to go somewhere else, I would try to understand where they wanted to be and, and why and help them get there. Um, you know, but I think that the same sort of approach applies if you're a change agent and you're trying to change how they do their job is really say this is why I think this needs to change. Here are what I think the benefits are going to be for you and for the department and for the town um, and, and explain it and look I don't have all the answers and I'll admit it on TV and <laughs> you know I'll admit it to people and that's the other thing that I find is even if I think it's the best idea in the world if there's a lot of pushback I'll reel it back and say let's try it for two weeks let's try it for two months or a year and and if it doesn't work I'll I'll admit that I'm wrong and we'll go back to the way you've always done it and uh, you know so so I think that it, it's it, mentoring and I don't know if that that's answering your question or not but it, to me it's finding out you know where the person wants to go and how I can help them get there great thanks appreciate that Is that one mine? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So strategies for addressing areas you consider challenges, whether it's this job or any job. So one of the things that that I pride myself on is is communication and being unafraid to ask questions. Mm -hmm. And and so I think that Going back to the previous question, finding my own mentor. Yeah, right, right. Um, there you go. And, and just saying, how did you, you know, have you done, have you encountered this issue before? Or, hey, I, you know, I said about promoting employees that, you know, I don't have direct experience. What, what happened? You know, how, tell me about a time that you found that you needed to promote somebody or you had a difficult employee. And have you ever had this situation? How do you deal with it? Um, you know, I think finding a person that uh, has, has that experience, has, has spent time um, in dealing with the issues that a town administrator would deal with, um, you know, from resident requests to employees to, to budget management, I think um, that can help guide, not, not necessarily give the answers, but say this is this is my approach to, to these challenges and the other thing is putting time in you know I'm also not a not afraid to 
buy a book on you know human resources best practices and and spend a week or two just studying up and saying okay this is you know learning about my own management approach or um, philosophies on budgeting and and understanding that I might not get it right the first time but learning from those mistakes and and uh, continuing to improve I think is uh, another part of it um, and, and also being open to to constructive criticism and and sometimes deconstructive <laughs> criticism I guess would be the other you know uh, recognizing that that if somebody disagrees with me that I would hope that they would um, voice that and and is, is something that I'm certainly uh, open to hearing and improving on. So. If I could follow up, uh, you you said finding your own mentors in a town administrator's role. What what pool would you be reaching toward for finding mentors in a town administrator's role? God forbid it's selectmen, because Lord knows yeah. we both we come and go, and it's not our job. Yeah. So I have the good fortune of working for a town manager in Amherst um, and having worked with several um, town administrators who I built relationships with um, work er, I'm currently on the Mass Municipal Association Policy Committee on Regional Administration I think um, with several town administrators throughout. So, you know, w through the contacts at the MMA, um, certainly not afraid to, to reach out to uh, other local town administrators and town managers that, you know, um, worked with um, David Nixon um, and the, the South Hadley town administrator. So, you know, I, I think that there's, uh, <coughs> I've developed at least a, 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 the beginnings of a network um, with, with those folks and um, would certainly feel comfortable reaching out to them and then hopefully, you know, through the MMA, um, and it, is Sunderland a member of the MMA? Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, working with them, I don't think that they necessarily have a mentorship program, but I could, uh, don't, don't imagine it would be a heavy lift for them to find somebody that would be interested. In. Great. Now. Appreciate that. Thanks. Jeff, over the last year, you've probably made many big decisions. How do you make those decisions? What goes into it? What makes you, what makes you feel good, or how do you know you got the right decision at the end? I never know if I had the right decision at the end. <laughs> um, I, I think it, honestly, it's how, uh, it, it's how it's, how, how loud the response is to the decision. I feel like usually if it's a quiet response, then it's a pretty good decision. And that, that at least that's been my experience. Yeah. Um, it's, it's almost like um, with the, the CIA, you, you only hear about their failures, not their successes. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if you're doing your job, then people should be happy. And, you know, I almost I, I love government work, but it, you know, it, it should be the last thing people, the average citizen or resident thinks about. It should just work. And if everything's working, then you're not hearing any complaints, and that's the, the good thing. Um, so, you know, I, I think how I get to those decisions, um, Again, goes back to sort of the first question, which I think, you know, I, I certainly don't think it, it comes fully formed to mind. I think it's an iterative process of, um, you know, w one of the the big decisions that that we've been that we looked at in Amherst is, um, you know, allowing cannabis retail places in town and I was so that wasn't ultimately my decision technically ultimately it was the town manager's decision but you know I put together a group um, as as the main staff person on, on cannabis implementation um, 
because I knew I didn't have the entire perspective. And so having the health director there to say, this is what's in the best interest of public health, having the planning director to say, these are the areas where we might want it, the police chief to say, here's how we look at it from public safety, um, I think is really helpful in that I'm not standing up there alone saying, here's what we're doing, um, but standing up there with uh, allies who can say here's why we all think that th this is the best solution for us um, and so you know trying to incorporate as many viewpoints as possible um, and then taking a stand and, and um, hopefully getting it right and I think that you know cannabis is is a fairly good example in Amherst it was not you know, we, we've had a couple of residents who come and say, we don't want it in our town, but we really didn't hear a lot of pushback. And I think if we had gotten it wrong, um, Amherst is not a shy town about- You wouldn't have heard about it. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> okay, thanks, Jeff. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you'll be starting the new position at the start of the town's annual budget process. Take us through the process as you envision it happening. Like, what, what are your thoughts on that? Sure. So I think that would certainly be um, a place where I have my ideas, but I would be very open to uh, how understanding how Sunderland has, has done the budget process in the past, um, you know, working with the finance committee, understanding their priorities, understanding your priorities. Uh, typically what I would do is I would start with uh, the fiscal year 20 budget and I would take a look at it and I would um, speak to department heads and understand what they see as necessary changes and why. Um, understand what we expect uh, to receive from state from the state um, whether that's well whether I'll say it's level funded or decreasing because <laughs> it's probably not increasing yeah, probably not increasing um, it's true you know so so understanding sort of the the revenue picture um, and then what we would be spending and where there's a gap what what it's looking like where we might be able to shift things around if possible, um, understanding the capital budget. Uh, so I, I think that, you know, a, a good portion of my time would be going over last year's budget and, and really digging in and, and understanding um, for, from the various department heads and, and the line items, the, the need for it and how it would change uh, between last year and this year, what the requested changes were um, and I, I think that that's where I would start with that process. Um, has the finance committee been meeting yet? No, no they haven't met yet. <clears throat> and typically we all meet together too. Oh, As that's great. As we go great. through, we'll have like budget hearings with each department and we'll all meet, <clears throat> they'll typically sit over there and then we all meet together to go over each department's budget too, in addition to their own separate meetings. So, I, think so. I think that that's really helpful to have the joint, I mean, from my perspective, it's really helpful um, because I know there's nothing more frustrating from a resident or department perspective than hearing one thing from one board and another thing from a different board. And um, so at least being at, at the same meeting to sort of coordinate the response, I think is really helpful. Um, and it, and it's great that you're all involved so you get the full picture as well. It's not just sort of the uh, town administrator's budget proposal um, that, that just gets laid on your desk. It's sort of a collaborative process with the finance committee. And then um, obviously it goes to town meeting and they ultimately right. approve it, <clears throat> um, hopefully. <laughs> it's a good yeah. budget. <laughs> yep. the, the term hopefully is a perfect placer. Um, along those budget lines, right, and budgeteering lines, uh, what in your work experience has prepared you for that 
in this particular perspective, right? You're going to be, as a town administrator, working with a whole host. And uh, how, have you, how have you prepared yourself? That is a great question. So um, the most experience that I have had with a budget was, uh, I think it was 20. 14 or 2015 when I was working in the governor's office and he's saying you know we remember that year actually so <laughs> here's, here's the budget and uh, it's too big <laughs> you know what so it was more policy decisions what what which of these um, departments or programs are you going to recommend doesn't get fully funded or gets cut um, so it was not the full budget process um, one of the things that, so th that is um, probably my most direct experience with budgets. I don't have an economic development budget in Amherst um, right now, oh, maybe um, in, in fiscal year 21. They, but um, so developing a budget has, has not been uh, something that I have a lot of experience with, but I have uh, the, ICMA, I don't remember exactly what that stands for, but Management Association has um, a number of ebooks and things on municipal budgeting. I think uh, the MMA may have resources sure. on it as well. So just reading up on, you know, what best practices are for municipal budgeting, um, I, I think that that would certainly be an area, you know, one of the more recently um, I was involved in setting the budget goals for the, I was working on parking last year and um, so setting transportation fund goals and, and uh, making capital requests. Um, I, I did a little bit of that mostly for, for signage, but um, very sort of in, in the grand scheme of the budget, small dollars, things, and um, literally my experience for that was, here's the fiscal year 19 uh, budget chapter on transportation in word format, here are the goals section, here's, the, you know, put plug in your number here and plug in why you're doing it and update the goals from the previous fiscal year. So, um, that's Take that's sort of my my experience and how how I've been trying to uh, learn about it. Circling back, if I could, to your uh, state uh, experience in the at the executive branch level, when it came to those policy decisions in your sphere of influence, what was the mechanism for those decisions, other than lost revenues? Right, right. I get that. The 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 hard and fast black and white I get, but what was the inside decision making like? So again, it was, there were a group of us. Yep. Um, some were, one of the per people in the room was a, a legislative director who yep. obviously said, is this legislative friendly or not? Who's it gonna benefit? Um, from my perspective, it was, who is the program going to help uh, the most? And, and you know, the, it, it's value judgments, but, you know, who's the most needy of the programs? Um, you know, you don't want to cut low-income housing tax credits, it, you know, versus, uh, tax, you know, the... Um, film tax credit or something, you know, the, the very different, uh, you know, so I, I think that trying to, uh, you know, I guess for me, it, it, it sort of, and fortunately, at least my experience with, with the governor that I was working for was that we shared a lot of those values and saying that, um, you know, we really want to help the people that that need the most help. And so those are the core programs that we wanted to protect. Um, but having, 
Yeah, any any time you're you're cutting programs, it's going to be difficult. Um, although I will say that I at one point I had applied for a job on, in the Senate Budget Office and. <laughs> we had a budget exercise and they said, well, you need to trim 10% off. And I looked at the list of things and I, was like, okay. I think I picked like two or three that, that were, you know, for, um, you know, hel helping homeless people or some, something like that and, and fully funded those and everything else got, you know, a 10% cut because I, if I don't have the expertise, um, to make an informed decision, I feel like my fallback position is to make what I think is a fair decision. Um, and so obviously I would want to do as much research as I could to make the best decision possible, but um, if, if it can't be, if I can't justify it, then I feel like it, the least I can do is try and be fair. Thank you. Okay, softball now. You, <laughs> please discuss with us about a time when you had a major project or objective with a tight time constraint, limited resources, and how did you overcome the challenges to achieve the necessary outcome? 10% budget cut. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. Yeah. That's easy. No problem. Um, so, you know, I, I think a, a good example would be um, see, probably about a year. November already. So two years ago, um, Amherst had some changes in their parking policies, uh, and it was about a month before those policies were to take effect, um, and there really hadn't been any publication about them. And so the town manager turned to me and said, "Okay, we need to start telling the businesses and telling the community what we're doing, um, and we need to communicate it in a way that's easy to understand." and those changes involved certain uh, parking spaces, well, in increased cost of parking in almost all spaces, uh, certain spaces being enforced later, uh, other ones being enforced at a lesser time. Um, so not, not really easy to understand. Uh, and, you know, again, no, no real budget for it, um, but just a, a tight timeline. And so came up with about, a, you know, I'm not a designer, but design, you know, a, a used a, a word template and tried to highlight the, the most important things in a one page, you know, graphic intense thing. Um, and then threw together a web page and had a URL, easy to follow URL at the bottom uh, for more information go to, but really try and get the point across that, hey, things are changing, it's gonna cost a little more. Um, by the way, you can pay with your phone now. Um, we went from a system where you had to have, uh, e each spot had a number to you pay by your plate, and so explaining that, that make people a little bit more uh, familiar with things and I think just simplifying it and and I'll say the the one regret is that we didn't communicate where you didn't have to pay for parking and I think that's one of the things that I would have wanted to do as well we we sort of created a a core area of town where it was a dollar an hour and then outside of that it was 50 cents an hour and then not communicating that outside of that it's free um, and I think that was a missed opportunity for the town because all people saw was oh you're raising <laughs> you're raising my parking rates it's gonna be more expensive to park um, but I think that you know and then we, going to the copier in town hall and just <laughs> making printing printing the, that one pager and um, hoofing it around town to the businesses and say things are changing here's you know 
if you want a stack of these, I'm happy to give you a stack to give to your customers, but we want to make sure you and your employees are aware of these changes. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that we, it still could have been communicated better, but that was, um, that was one of the, the tight timelines that with, with <coughs> limited resources. Um, and, you know, ideally you get somebody from graphics or IT to create something that looks a little bit prettier and you get a little printing budget so you figure out how to get it onto maybe a palm sized card instead of a full page. Um, but w with the time and resources available, it's one of the things that I did what I was able to at the time. Thank you, Jeff. When you guys switched over to Park Mobile and everything there, huh? We yeah. did. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Describe, please describe your previous experience either interacting with or managing a diverse, not that this has ever happened before, a diverse community volunteer group with a divergent agenda. And you have to have that goal of getting consensus between all those wildly divergent opinions about how to solve whatever the issue is. I mean, it never happens here, and you'll never run into it in this town, but... And it won't uh, happen again Monday night. No, exactly. No, <laughs> Or the following Monday. <laughs> right. Right. Sorry. Uh, what's on the agenda Monday night? It's this road, plus that intersection, yeah. plus that road, yeah. plus, you know, everything else. Yeah. <laughs> so... Consensus is an interesting word. Yeah, it is a <laughs> I, very I interesting like, word, yep. Um, Consensus is is difficult. Um, I, I think that part of part of what government needs to do is make the hard decisions, even if they're not the popular ones. And so uh, I think that what and. I'll say that with the full recognition that a town administrator is is hired and not elected, so it's a lot easier for me to say than, than maybe sitting on your side of the table. Not necessarily, but go ahead. Um, yeah. But <laughs> but I, I think that so I think that it's important to bring the community together and to understand what their concerns are and and do the best possible job to address the concerns and to take as many viewpoints um, as you can into account when making the decision. But ultimately, I think that, uh, and I certainly don't impose my views on people, but I think that part of the, the, the way I view government is when I'm voting for somebody, I'm voting for them to not make the decision I would make, but what they think is the best decision. I, I, you know, you're empowering somebody to make those decisions for you. And so in my mind, you're all empowered to make the best decision you think, and then you're empowering the town administrator to make the best decision he or she thinks. Uh, you know. So in my mind, you don't always have to come to consensus, and that might not be a popular answer, but I think listening to the community, doing, your, doing the best job um, to, to address the concerns and the issues and, and the desires of the community, um, but also having a view of the long term and um, understanding that can, a lot of times people don't think beyond you know, their front yard or their backyard or their side yard, and that's really what they're concerned with is, is um, their, their lot or their street. Um, and, you know, we're running into this in Amherst as well. We have an affordable, uh, proposed affordable complex, um, single room occupancy, and the neighbors are saying, yes, we absolutely want affordable housing, not down the street Not from us, right. and and you know my view is that that's that's what everybody's going to say. Mm -hmm. Nobody, you know, everybody is for the concept, but not in the loc any location that's proposed. And and so government has to sometimes say, 
we understand, but we think this is in the best interest of the town, and so you're we're, you're not going to be happy with our decision. Uh, a certain portion of the population. Um, so. All right, thank you. We had a quote strikingly similar to that, similar to that in this room five or six years ago. Mm. Yeah. And I remember, I think you said something about, um, with the blue heron, so, mm -hmm. you know. With, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, it's like, okay, let's just tear it down. What? Well, yeah. what do you want to do with it? Right, and it, it's costing the town right. tens of thousands of dollars a year. Right. Just to... <clears throat> Before it was the blue heron. Let me make that clear. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. The, the, yeah. It's been it's been an absolute win, and it took years for. And there are still residents in town who say, like, "You sold it for a dollar." It's like, okay. Congratulations. Thanks very much. So, professional life. What's the most satisfaction over the years? I've got my story. He's got his story. Your story. You get a story. The chairman lives on stories. So. Most satisfaction. Mm. Um, Professional life, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I think that. I think that probably the the most satisfying would be um, I worked on the economic development bill in twenty. 13, 2014, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and there were certain provisions in that bill that we, I think, worked very creatively on. And one of those was the, the global entrepreneur in residence provision, which basically allowed, what, what we found is that foreign students were coming to be educated in Massachusetts um, and then their visas would expire and they would right they would have to go right home yep. so it was partnering with the private sector and the educational institutions um, to basically provide a I don't know if it's an h1b visa but it was a, it was yeah yeah um, to, to a allow them to work part-time in the private sector to get a work visa but also I think I think the idea was allow them to continue to do research um, at the universities and, and continue to stay here and contribute to, to the economy um, and it was at a, a time when I, I feel like there was a contraction in, in the number of visas and um, definitely was yep so I think that was one, and then the the second would be, you know, I, I guess it it wasn't necessarily. It, it was more about um, the community that I was working in, but you know, I think when um, I'm, I'm trying to remember, there was. Uh, what precipitated the border crisis, I think there was just a, a flood of um, Central and South American people coming across the borders again around the same time. And the governor said, hey, we will take, you know, we'll take people in Massachusetts. And I remember being in the room and him having, you know, uh, relig major religious leaders from Boston standing right behind him and saying, this is, this is the type of state that we want to be. We want to be compassionate. We want to be welcoming. These people have done nothing wrong. They're just fleeing a bad situation, um, and we want to open our doors. And again, I had, you know, no real involvement other than to to say I support this decision. Um, but but being in the room and, and feeling like I was a part of something larger than myself was uh, really rewarding. They'll have them in every Monday night, by the way. <laughs> I was, I was, I was going to say, it's more like town meeting. Yeah, the yeah. Town, yeah town meeting. It's more like town meeting, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, so, I'm glad that's done. <laughs> it's always a large part of experience. that. Especially, yeah. Two points, Paul. I think, I think we've... Are you, are you okay making executive decisions? Mm. It's an executive position. <laughs> yes, yeah. 
Absolutely. I think understanding, um, I, uh, under understanding more about the town, I, I will get more comfortable. I think sure. that, you know, there's certainly a feeling out period. Um, but yes, I, I have no problem making executive decisions. That was totally ad lib, by the way. It's nothing on our script. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's an important enough. question. <laughs> yeah. You know, we talk a lot about consensus and mentoring and building, and all of a sudden you go, well, wait a minute, the police chief called, and I got to do something. Right. Boom. Yep. Okay. Yep. Sometimes that happens. Yep. yep. <laughs> Any other questions off script you guys can think of? No, I'm no. Just coming good. A train yeah. leaves Chicago at 8 a.m. <laughs> I promise. I always hated those, frankly. I can't yeah. do it. Take a plane. Take a plane, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, on a plus note, this is completely tangential. Uh, the uh, Connecticut, the Hartford line, had record ridership over Thanksgiving weekend from Did New it? Haven to Greenfield. Nice. That's what we need. Because if we don't get the ridership, we're not going to be able to keep the Correct. service. Anyway. So that's good. Sidebar right awesome. there, Counselor. Uh, questions for us, if you would. Sure. <clears throat> Only three. No, no. <laughs> just, I can't. Just my three. <laughs> um... So, I guess one of one of the questions is: seems like every other year, on average, there's a special town meeting. Um, is that depends? Do, do you typically have a special? Maybe I should ask you differently. Yeah. So for so for a number of years, we had a special town meeting. The night of our town annual town meeting is by bylaw. And by bylaw, it's date, and we declare time and space. We had, for a number of years, special town meeting as a precursor on the same night. And it was usually to clean up uh, bills, meaning payables, that were due in the current year. There was a change that allowed us to do those bills at an annual and we have subsequently not had specials since we had one last september for a different reason but we don't have them programmatically the notion of the autumn town meeting or the autumn special to clean things up is something that we do not we have not experienced uh as a pattern so when you see a special town meeting come up and it usually is the same it has historically been the same night as our annual it usually was 45 minutes a little less before and it was because you just had to clean up bits and pieces. The landscapers needed to get paid. We had to allocate snow and ice or whatever. Yeah. Did I capture that correctly? So, sometime, sometimes we'll, uh, police cruiser was an accident. You have That's to replace true. That was a good you, one. You have to replace yeah. the police cruiser. That was real time. And in our arcane cows. way of doing things, we have to call a special to appropriate the money. Yep. Um, sometimes when, mm -hmm. when, we, when we put our budget together, um, we will will have monies, we will use monies from different funds to cover it because we have those monies available to Fair us. Enough, yeah. um, then then we'll, we'll have a special just to, when we got we get all of our numbers mm -hmm. okayed by the state and we certify, certify free cash and stuff, then we'll go back and we'll, we'll get the monies back into the right, right accounts. Right. So, so we may carry we may carry more free cat we may carry more stabilization because we we don't know what's going to happen with the budget because our town meeting follows usually is before the election so if we have an override or some kind of question so we'll put we'll have more money in stabilization so because we know that that money is available to us right. so then it, it's it's more way we've been using a special t to correct um a f uh, not not to correct but to reappropriate our our funds so we, right. we get them in order <clears throat> on on the whole this board um when we go to town meeting um we respect the the vote so let's say we wanted an override for 17 million dollars to <laughs> to buy amherst. to to buy amherst <laughs> Um, and it and it passed, but there was a there was a group of people that said we really need to buy Amherst. Um, this board historically over the last 
15, 20 years has not called another special meeting. Just we'll say, look, we had our thing, come and vote. Right. Then we'll wait to, our, you know, not to say we wouldn't revisit next fiscal year at the an annual, but we wouldn't call a special for something like that. Right. So it's, it's usually... Used very judiciously. Yeah, it's usually a, a very it's specific or, or frontier may, because we're in a regional district. They, they come to us, yeah. Right. They may yeah. want us to, to um, a re how to, there's a formula may have changed or they may need a town meeting vote to do something. I think we had to do one for the North Main Street project too, I think, because of the timing of it exactly. and the purchase. And yeah. But but it's usually usually we like to we like to conduct the town's business at the annual town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. We use and that's usually how it's done. Um, Warrants usually run between the high twenties and the high thirties as yeah. far as articles go. Just out of curiosity, how how long does that take you to get one night? <laughs> Most of the times, we have I mean, there have been some that carry forward, but yeah. a long time though. Yeah. But we, but we try I, and try to do a twelve-hour marathon session just to get it all done. You know, <laughs> it's usually not that bad. But we kind of, but but our 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 board board our our select board honors a town meeting vote, no matter which way it goes. And some people have problem with that, but I I think you have to. I think you. I I our philosophy been has been that um, we we want people to know that their vote counts so that they'll come mm -hmm. right come to town meeting right because because it says well you you'll just keep calling a special town meeting until it passes anyways that we haven't done that on, on the on the flip side to that when it's been a, you know something dramatic uh it is you know within the quarter or within a month or within a quarter or certainly within the year you hear you know um, something like wow we didn't know or you guys weren't kidding, or it's like, yeah, it's easy. Just put the facts out there, yeah. vote, right? Just vote. Yeah, right, yeah. And how many people typically show up to it? Does it? Come I mean, on. if you do it in one night, I assume they come for the entire night, just yeah. not just well, for a particular article. By the end of the night, by yeah. the end of the night, yeah. most people come talk. Um, there, there are many people that come specifically to talk about the. Uh, the eight million dollar budget. We'll right. we'll talk about the uh, two thousand uh, dollar Scott Air Pack or right. 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 or fire hoses or fire hose or or police cruiser or it's typically between two and the new boiler for the, the issue, school. Right. But um, but we usually we, we get yeah. you know we'll have a it'll start with over two hundred right send usually around two hundred yeah. Yeah. yeah and then. You know, by the end of the meeting, you, usually while I get to the end of the back back end of the <laughs> meeting, we're doing right? <laughs> consent you know, articles. And, yeah, yeah, consent articles. Uh, people, it's it's not it's not unlike many open town meeting forms of government. People are passionate about uh, a zoning bylaw that may happen right. or <clears throat> a particular increase in a budget item, and they want to understand the whys uh, and the hows. Um, and it's good. It's it's as it's been said before, and I'm certainly one who says it. You know, town meeting, especially open town meeting, is a form of primal democracy, and it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It's clunky, and it has an attitude. And it depend and it changes every year. That's okay. We we um, take a more um, our approach to town meetings is that we we figure that it's it's a, a meeting to conduct the business of the town. Yeah. Um, over the last few years, we've been getting more citizens' petitions about right. their their important topic. I, for me, it's a hard right. to deal with them at town meeting because that's for us. That's our that's our night to talk about the business of the town right. and, and foreign policy. And, or something and like so, that. and we're talking about just you know telling our <clears throat> and, and that and and that's town meeting we should all be pulling together in the same direction um, and some of the time the things that come up are divisive things you know about you know telling somebody what to do when to do how to do it or and that's and that's tough and it's just like well but we're here to, to run our town you know do we buy that new 
fire truck? Do we buy that new dump truck? Do we do we give do we pay our employees a, a working you know a, a living wage? I mean, those are important functions of the town. Not that the other things aren't important, but there's a place for them. Yeah. You know, but I also understand why people come because that's when you're going to get two or three hundred people to to discuss those. But it's and we don't have we don't have another forum to just discuss those other things, right. unfortunately. So, how was that for wide wide a field? <laughs> no, that's a, getting a feel for town meeting. I feel like is important. Yeah, um, no doubt about that. So uh, another question I had is about the master plan, mm -hmm. um, and I think in the community development strategy it said it was going to be being worked on is it still being worked on is the community development strategy sort of the the working document of the master plan are you looking for i think it's from 74 maybe 74 76 yeah. in that range you want to start um, with the master plan we'll talk about what pieces have been upgraded go ahead so the master plan in and of itself uh, is that document you just described from the from the 70s, right? But there are elements inside of that master plan that have been, because of necessity, uh, updated. Housing uh, production plan, yep. open space and rec plan, yep. right? Conservation is a very dynamic plan. I think, as we said in our first meeting, one of the one of the strategic roles of the town administrator would be to corral the remaining elements, economic development and goal mm -hmm. setting, and then understand mm -hmm. does the master plan as it was formulated and then the section subsequently updated, is it a cohesive document based on what would be the 21st century's version of a master plan, right? We have mm -hmm. one that has served the town well to this point, the question is, what does it look like uh, in the 21st century? What pieces are missing to be updated, and then how do you coalesce the whole thing and put it under the cap, put it under the title of master plan all over again? It seems like there are chapters or elements of it that are off and running, yep. and there are elements of it that clearly need to be reviewed, it's and brilliant. then rolled back up into a single document and saying, okay, here's the master plan. I think you really almost have to think of it as a living organic document because you can't just etch it in stone and walk away, especially with the rapidity of change and just how, I mean, look at how our interaction with the state government has changed over the time sure. period. It's radically different. <clears throat> so it's kind of a constantly evolving thing. That's a good point. There's, there's constantly evolving pressures on a plan. Yeah. The question is, if, if the plan is a cohesive plan and it's a strategic document, can you look back at the 74 to 76 plan and go, wow, did Sunderland actually get there? Yeah, I think it can. And, and, and you, you can are. actually draw straight lines to right. where we are today yep. from that space. The question is, what does the next space look like? And how do we roll it up into one space? Because you have to have a framework that's got to kind of hold you there, yep. and you yep. massage the borders, and yeah, that's a heavy lift. It is. <clears throat> Again, pieces have moved quickly. Conservation is dynamic. Open space and rec dynamic. Housing production dynamic. You know, land preservation. If you looked at the master plan and said, "Oh, we're going to we're going to get involved in the APR, please. We're going to protect." It may be simply one sentence from '76 that says, "We're going to protect the right to farm." Okay, you look at all the steps that have been taken in that, in the interim from that from the from its inception, and look at the landscape and go, "Wow, that worked." Yep. I think there's the "Wow, that worked" piece that's yeah. got to be looked at, or that didn't work. What did we learn? Right. Because you have to have a vision, and then you have to... Right. Hope I captured that one. Yep. Great. Um, so, uh, and I guess this, this goes to the, the... Well, I'll 
I'll start with what would next steps be? And I, I may be jumping ahead, but you know, um, as far as in the hiring process, okay. and, and is there sure. um, opportunities to meet with staff or other folks that we would be working with, or um, you know, I, I just ha how how, do, how does the process go sure. from here? You want to remember that? Oh, no, you can. So we have, we, have, we have two other interviews, second interviews. The board at that point will take uh, time and consider, in a very short period of time, consider um, top candidate, extend uh, an invitation to open a contract negotiation, and then uh, expect an answer in relatively short order, uh, knowing that there is uh, negotiations that have to be taken care of. Uh, that's a negotiation well, with the board. Uh, there's an appropriation for the current year uh, with respect to salary. There are in negotiation in negotiations for a contracted negotiated position. There are some latitudes that are uh, incorporated outside of the personnel bylaws. We stick to the basics of the personnel bylaws, uh, and that hopefully an offer can become can come to a conclusion and then uh, start thereafter. So we have an interview next week or two? Two next yeah, week. Yeah. So I'd expect, so what are we, 15th? The week, the week before Christmas? Some kind of decision? Okay. And, and then an extension of an offer to enter a contract negotiation? Okay. Yeah. So um, I, the reason I ask is, you know, my only experience was was in Amherst with, sure. with the current town manager, and I know that they had, um, you know, sat down with the department heads during the hiring process and sort of got uh, the select board. I think got feedback from some of those people on what who they thought would be good. So I just wasn't sure if so there was, was that, any. Was that pre offer or post offer? That was I'm pre offer. Yeah. So. That's, that's a little different yeah. than the process we yep. are undertaking. Yeah, no, I was just, just trying to understand. Straight uh, to the wolves, that's the course. answer. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> pretty much Plain and simple, straight to the wolves. We just pack everybody in a room and leave you there. And While on TV. The department heads, yeah. <laughs> hey, as long as yeah. it's being recorded. That's exactly right. <laughs> yep. Um, and I think the answer's on the front of your binders, but I'll ask anyway. Uh, town Council is KP yeah, Law? KP Law, okay. yep. Been, it's been for, um, been for a long, long time. Yeah. We, um, were one of the, we've been with them for a long time. We, Dave, Dave Jenkins is, he, um, he's, he, he's our, uh, he's our go-to guy. 20 years. You can call him and ask him about us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Seriously. You, yeah. you, you want to call you want to call Dave Jenkins sure. and ask about the, the board of selectmen? Feel free. He's nothing but candid. Great. All yes, of, he is candid. All, all, all of our foibles. <laughs> Important. So the, I guess the, but you would see him at town meeting. Right. He he he, uh, town meeting. he comes to our town meeting. Yeah. That's great. Um, so. <laughs> But we don't like to see him any other time. No, I mean, exactly. There's a labor right, problem, exactly right. so we don't like to see yeah. him. Um, it, so, I, I thought of this question when, when you asked about, about my biggest failure, so I'll throw it back. What, what, did, what was the biggest conflict that, that, you know, that you think the select board has had with either a, a former town administrator, and you certainly don't have to name them or or um, or a town administrator that you've witnessed as the town administrator having a conflict with a resident and you know how how was that resolved what was what, um, you know do you, I, I don't know I'm just trying to get it get a better handle on, on some of the potential areas of conflict and and how those things work work out in Sunderland or, or I guess don't one of the one of the most important things I think is that on a, on on every day you're you're going to 
there, there are some residents that'll, that that you'll get to know very, very well. That'll that'll come in. Um, now, and and we we can go back and, and and I think what the board board will tell you is that there there was a gentleman many many years ago who since passed away was a former selectman, and and he would have he would come in and and over the course of a month or two he would come in with ten different. Ten different items, and previous boards um, or town administrators would look at that and say, "Oh, it's just it's just Tom again. Just 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 forget him." And and, right. and anything he said, it because Tom said it, and he Tom always talking. It 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 didn't matter. Um, and what we told our town administrator, and and um, is that. Look, just listen to what he has to say, and and you know, out of the ten things, seven you may be able to dismiss, right. three may be may be good ideas, and the sub and the last one may be an excellent idea. But getting that one excellent idea is worth right. the other nine. Listening to the other nine, and and I and and we had a, a, a town administrator that was pretty set in his ways. Um, but, but what he started to do is is he started to engaging the, the, with those people, and and I, I I think one of the important things is that, and I think and I think you said it before, is that you need to to know the people in the town, and you need to and 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 don't pass judgment on on, on someone because, and, and what I've heard from you is is that you you like to build. The consensus word is a tough word, but but you like to you 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 like to build a plurality, mm-hmm. and 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 with that plurality you like to, to move forward. Um, I would think that's the same thing that um, we've been exceptionally lucky. Um, our our first town administrator was a gentleman with a lot of experience, um, and. He helped us through a lot of a lot of growing pains. Um, the, our, our next t- town administrator, Margaret, was here for for nine years, almost ten years, yep. um, and and she was a town clerk. Um, and I think if you know, Nardowitz? yeah, oh okay, yep. and if and now if you know, and if you know anything about town clerks, town clerks um, serve the people. They are very, very people oriented. That's that's their job. Um, and and Margaret didn't have the town exp- town admin- administrator background, but she knew people. And and I think her the handling of people, the staff, but more importantly, she could communicate with the residents. That that and, and Sherry is a Sherry. I think was the same. Well, I I think a good t- town administrator, they listen to, you know, you the selectmen are the elected representatives. Um, so they're the they're the uh, chief operating officers of the town. Um, but the town town administrator can't be afraid to go to to the board individually or as a group and say, hey, you know, I've been talking to. You know, so and so, and this is what I'm hearing. So they got it. So I think a town administrator fails when you just listen to the selectmen. Right. Well, I, I think we're all in customer service in the end. I mean, in, in a certain respect, you know, working with the public. So yeah. So with respect to your your question about um, interactions. I think the, the, the present board has been for its tenure largely focused on the practical. And it's so easy, um, it makes things, in my opinion, it makes things very easy, right? A good administrator will bring some visioning, will do the kind of nuts and bolts of uh, managing as opposed to supervising the day-to-day operations, works with department heads. Um, this board has historically not gotten in any administrator's back pocket, not interested. That's just not style. Um, and if I, I, would, I would be hard, I am 
honestly hard pressed to find in a three administrators a time of like conflict. I haven't. Mm. It's conflict. Been, yeah. yeah. Well, that's. The, right. I think it, part of your part Locking of your question up. was, you know, how is it? So I I I'm hard pressed to find that. You know, there's hard work. There's hours. There's phone calls. There's some questions, both. Uh, uh, they're bi-directional questions about how do we present something in a particular way that makes the most sense for the electorate to understand. But the issue is just the issue. It's yep. like, okay. it's just... And there'll be frustrations. So, and. so, the way we run our town administrator, and, and sometimes, some, this is hard for town administrators to understand, right. is that something happens and the fire chief calls calls a town administrator and the town administrator calls a three selectman. It, it, again, for us, fortunately or unfortunately, people call us, including the, the newspapers, yeah. and they're gonna ask us questions, so we wanna be aware of what's going on. Sure. Now, in many years ago, then the chief would, then the chief would get, or the chief would call all three selectmen. We'd all have pretty much the same questions. That's not a good, I want, Scott wants, David wants right. our chief, right. fire, police, highway, whatever, to be dealing with the, the problem. He does not need to talk to the three of us, right. all right? Unless he needs something. If he needs something, we'll be right there. Right. We've done driven snow trucks, or plow trucks, we fire trucks. whatever they need, we can do, <laughs> we will do. But town administrator, we want that town administrator to be the point contact. Right. We and then then town administrator calls the three of three of us. Mm -hmm. Says Tom, there's been an accident at blah blah blah. This is this is what's happening. This is what the chief is doing. This this is what's happening. He gives us all the particulars. Then if I have any questions, I say, town administrator, geez, what about? Well, he didn't tell me that. I'll check. But let me talk to the other two first. Talk to the other the other two selectmen. The other two selectmen will get all the information so that we're all hearing the same information. And if any, any, if I need any questions, it goes through the town administrator. Right. So because the chief doesn't be needing, unless there's something specific, does not need to be hearing from the three of us with the same question. And frankly, there's usually policy to back that up. Yeah. There's right. a protocol and a policy that says that, 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 whether it's departmental or whether it's interdepartmental or if it's a town policy. Yeah. It, uh, we're not I'm personally not interested in knowing all the inner and outer workings of every single department. I need to know enough to stay out of jail and keep everybody safe and make sure they've got the money they need to do what they need and they participate in policies that make things better. That's personally what I think the selectmen should be doing. Yeah, so we don't, we don't, we don't see a reason to be down wallowing in the pits. No micromanaging. Yeah, we don't mind. Yeah. But staying informed so that if right. the press well, calls we want to you, know. mm -hmm. right. or a right. resident calls you and says, what's happening with this, you ha you're informed. Exactly. You and and, and just, like, just like our department heads know that, that you know, we, we, we have warrants, we have bill warrants assigned every other week, we have payroll on those off week. Guess what? We go through the warrants. Now, I may... And, and I may not know what every bill that's in there, but if I see somebody who's getting 500 hours of overtime, I'll say, What's that? What's going Jeff, on? Jeff, could you check why we got blankly blank has 500 hours of overtime right. last right. week? How come we get so many telephone calls from the wastewater treatment plant right. to Cape Cod? Right. You know? So, so we're, we know what's going on, but yeah. you don't. Trust but verifies what it sounds yeah. like. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, that's that's how we try to run business. But for as far, we we haven't really had problems. The, the I I can't, you know, the the I'll be honest with you. Town administrators is a tough job. Mm -hmm. I I think it's I think it's I think it's a it's an exceptionally tough job. Um, and and sometimes you probably. You know, you don't know if you're going to be coming or going for a lot of time. I also think there's a lot, there's a lot of, the job also is one of the most rewarding jobs in town government. Because I think you can actually see 
you can see a lot of come to fruition of a lot of your policies. You'll, you'll see things happen. You know, so from the time, uh, uh, and, and for instance, on the on the 120 um, senior housing, you know, in in five years we'll see we've gone we will see go the buying the purchasing of a location the pat you know passing through town meeting uh, the the Design, selection of the designer yeah. uh, the review of the plans of and and we will we will see that to fruition. We're getting an update in the next couple of weeks. Yep. I mean, to me, that so you're, you're going to see, and 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 you can see the changes in people's life. I, I remember when I started in Amherst, I sat down with Sherry, and she was talking about sort of the river walk and the boat launch, and you know, lo and behold, and it's there. You know, it um, is, and and, so. and and and, and, and <laughs> you know, it's over there. And and, and 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 one of the most sometimes people say so we'll ask about the how government, local government, and I, and I say, you know, you, if, without, without a lot of effort, you can, if you pay $5,000 with taxes, you can probably see where all those $5,000 go. Pretty close, yeah. You know, in, in local government. I know what I pay in federal and state tax, I have no idea where it goes. But, I, but local government, local taxes, the local tax dollars, and in what you also see when you're town administrator, you're selecting that is the generosity, the mm -hmm. generosity of, of many of our businesses in town right. that people don't and, and they and they don't want their generosity broadcast. And that to me is amazing, but they just want to do good. Right. To your point, the, with Open Town Meeting, you you actually decide where your tax dollars go. You you Bingo. have the well, we we had that conversation sometime. It, it says, "Well, you're spending my." I said, Actually, no. no you, you voted. <laughs> you. This. Yes. It's a town meeting, right. and and if you looked at the town meeting vote, I didn't vote for that. Right. But that we we don't we don't miss an opportunity to remind, uh, especially coming into town meeting, that they are the legislative body that we are simply presenting a proposal, and the moderator runs the meeting. Yeah, not we're just, our meetings. We're window dressing. Win, window dressing at a town meeting. We're there to answer questions. The rest of it, yeah, we're we're, ta we're it's not and like that's why we work exceptionally hard for three months, right? Um, so that quality, we have the answers. Quality of information. Yeah, have the answers. Anticipate questions. If it's a if it's a proposal with some measure of complexity, boil it down, but be prepared. So I would say, what would get me? Probably, I would be most uncomfortable if I was sitting in the, up in front of town meeting and didn't have an answer, answer for something. Yeah. That would not be good. Yeah. To my to my my good friend and former finance committee member Liz Foster, who said that she got involved in the finance committee at one annual town meeting when members of the finance committee leaned and looked right, and members of the select board leaned and looked left, and no one had the answer. That was it. She went she, she went and got appointed. <laughs> <laughs> How many year you ran? I, re I remember that. I remember that town meeting. Yeah. And the and the accountant, uh, yeah, yeah. They, they didn't even think about having the accountant there. Right. So Why would we need the accountant? You have the accountant. So, seven P's. That's part of part of the plan. I almost know the seven P's. You know six of them. One of them, maybe not, but it's okay. <laughs> Prior proper planning prevents. Blank poor performance. Seven P's. Easy. Just like in Greenfield. No. <laughs> the Poobah shaping. Well, actually, my, my, seven, <laughs> my, my, seven, my seven, I think it's a little different because of Coast Guard. It's uh, yeah. people on board, yeah. position. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was the CB seven P's. Yeah, that's so when I was saying, you said seven P, I'm thinking. Wait a minute. How does Scott know about people on board, people position, on, pu PFDs? Yeah. Yeah. No. Prior proper planning prevents blank poor performance. Done. Seven Ps. Okay. What else? Um, we don't have favorite a Beatles song. No, sorry, I can't do that. <laughs> can't. No, I can, but can't choose. Okay. I can. um, I, you know, just one of the other questions that they, that I was going through the website and, and looking at things are all the boards and committees that are listed on the website active? Um, Largely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, great. Just 
Boston. It's a pretty active community. One yeah. thing that uh, two of your predecessors uh, mentioned was the depth and range of both uh, volunteerism and uh, skill set that Sunderland has going into boards and committees. That's great. And right, we just absolutely we're just blessed that way. Absolutely. And it takes yeah. passion and right. volunteerism. Right. You know that, that people care about it. That's. Um, we'll be here. You know, I think one of the things yeah. that was said in, in the first interview was working with those residents and committees to take their ideas and help sure. them, you know, find the state or federal funds to help bring it into fruition. And I think that that's mm -hmm. ha having those community advocates really pushing it makes it much easier. And um, sometimes know, getting pushed isn't easy, but the the end result is invariably right. a very good thing. Yeah, it's worth it when you look back yeah. on it and you're like, okay. Absolutely, yeah. but there is a, it is a it is a uh, we're we're uh, blessed in the uh, Department of um, Riches with respect to residents in this town. So, uh, you know, one of the other questions, and this is an off the cuff one because I'm done with sure. my official well, list. Ahead. But what would you say is the the breakdown of UMass affiliated residents? versus non, because you had said there's a large sort of population that are students or faculty or staff. Um, it, and I guess maybe a better question is not UMass affiliated, but I, I don't like this word, but I don't have a better one, transient, you know, that they're here for a certain number of years, but they're not gonna be long, you know, they're not here for- Right, they may be living here while they're going to school or whatever. Right. Um, uh, you know, if I could take yeah. the first part, yeah. I, I would I would say from a, a demographic perspective, you know, there's a plurality. I would say from a social and a community perspective, it has no impact. Right. It's one community, and I say that maybe with a, with a bit of pie in the sky, but the reality is, you know, there's there's no sharks and jets walking around. Which is a, I, don't, I don't see it as townies versus not townies. Right. You know, I don't. I, I, I've been here twenty six years this year, yeah. and I don't see it. Right. And maybe that's just me. No, I agree. Because I, I, some communities, it's much more evident. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. That's yeah, I would agree. <clears throat> residents are residents are resident. A participant is a participant. It is a participant. Anyway, that's go ahead. You can probably I don't, nail I don't, numbers. I, I don't, I, I think that uh, Scott's absolutely right. I, I think that um, we have said for, Sunderland has a large percentage of apartments, not just the big structures, oh, yeah, but, a bunch but, of them. Yeah. but um, I, I know a couple, more than a couple, mm -hmm. Um, residents that lived here longer than Scott, mm -hmm. that have lived their entire life in apartments. Mm -hmm. we've, we've buried some at the cemetery. They've only lived in the apartments. So, and and and, and so I Lifetime. I think like with my with my mom and dad, there was apartment people, and then there was residents. Yeah, that's fair. The initial that was integration. Thirty right. thirty right. thirty years ago, forty right. years ago, right. because, um, but I think today. Most people are going to tell you that um, th there are students, sure. um, but I think students add a vitality to our community um, that I that I, I personally think we'd miss if they weren't here. Yep, um, it's fair. Except on when you're by graduation and they got the big parties, but that's usually um, in Amherst. Yeah, that's yeah. usually in Amherst, but. <laughs> But I, I think for the most part, most when when people introduce themselves, they say, "Well, live in Sunderland," right. and they, they don't right. ask, "Well, do you live in apartments?" Or, right? I, I think if you do, you you do, and you right. don't, you don't. I don't think it really matters that much. You know, that's a fair question it, it, it because is. it's Absolutely. a it's um it's a, it's a question of perception, yep. right? Is there a perception that it's a bifurcated community and the reality is not not from my vantage point yeah yeah and i think part of it is also you know curiosity about 
um, w would shorter term residents that don't necessarily have a long term view of, of Sunderland be able to come to open town meeting as a resident sure. and, and as a voting block, you know, do things that may not be again in the best interest yeah. of the term long term, but um, Hmm. You, know, you know where the, the linchpin to that is, if I could? Yeah. The linchpin to that is uh, almost every uh, elementary school budget discussion. Mm. Right. Yeah, that's true. Right? Yeah, right. There's a, there's a coupling, a direct coupling right there. Yeah. I mean, we, we've, heard, we've heard in the past, like, well, they don't pay taxes. Yeah. Well, they do. Yeah, they just don't get a direct bill they for do. them. That's all. Right. Yeah. And, and I would say most, <clears throat> most, most residents that have a mortgage on the house don't pay direct taxes the bank is paying the taxes right. so they don't see the bill either right, right. but your excise tax that right is directly that's sure. a direct right payment. i mean very few people pay directly to the bank i mean pay to the town sure. sure most of most people go the banks are paying it right right on um, in part of their that part of their payment so so you're not really they're not really and it's no people in the apartment pay taxes they just right. don't get a tax bill in their name right right but they pay taxes. It's it's a very it's a very interesting, um, slow unwinding about yeah you know sense of community versus sense of um, uh, ownership. Yeah, it's a very different animal, and it's a good animal. It's a good place to be. Absolutely, it's a great place to work. You should consider it. Bye. <laughs> Anything else? No. No. Oh, wow. What do you Friday think? Friday night. You guys. Right. <laughs> Friday night. Yeah. The first, the first day of a full-on head cold. So I'm just going home. It's easy. Okay. If there's no other business tonight, uh, since we uh, started with one uh, motion that was to open, and now is there? I'm sorry. Recognition open. Is there a motion to close? Motion. Second. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.